<laughs> Folks, how about joining in with it and singing a little song? Let me see now. Uh, uh, oh, here's a right good one. Old MacDonald had a farm, eh? You remember that? Well, if you don't... These corporations are misleading consumers into buying into that old McDonald's man. You know, it's very calculated. If you walk in the supermarket and you see the products, it's all these like rolling green hillsides and all of those happy cows. And so companies work really hard to maintain that naivete in consumers. And there's 9 billion animals raised in the United States every year, and it's really a matter of scale. And we simply can't raise and eat that many animals in a way that would be sustainable. My parents didn't really cook much at all. You know, my dad would make spaghetti from time to time. My mom would make tuna croquettes. They had like a couple of meals they would make. And then we got takeout a lot. I ate Jack in the Box a lot, like frozen meals. So I wasn't, didn't grow up with like any sort of food consciousness at all. What I did grow up with and what I am really grateful to my parents for instilling in me is a love of animals. I grew up with dogs and both my parents are just very compassionate people. And so then when I went to college, I joined the animal advocacy group at UC Berkeley, and it was there that I learned about factory farming. The level of suffering that happens on factory farms is just, it's unbearable. Like to know how severe the suffering is, like, but not just that, but the, the scale that it's happening on was um, definitely very disturbing and very paralyzing for me because it felt like, you know, when there's suffering on that scale, like what can I as one person do that's going to make any sort of difference? It, I felt really hopeless. It can be very emotionally and psychologically challenging, but that's what motivated me. I mean, I just felt like I had to do something. And so speaking directly to people was the most direct way I could think of like, well, I'm gonna start somewhere. And so, and I, I really believed, and I still believe that if people knew that they would care and they would wanna make a difference. And that's really what we found. That was the most effective way that I could make a difference and like feeling that empowerment around food and, and seeing it not just as a meal, but also as an action that I could take that would have these wider repercussions. Food choices are incredibly powerful and that we can really change the world with our daily food choices. And it's actually one of the most effective ways that we can make change. I mean, I think my food philosophy is tied to my general life philosophy, which there's an amazing woman called Zoe Weil, and she has this, um, this philosophy, I guess, called MOGO, so like, do the most good, um, most good, least harm. I think that's, in general, kind of the best that any of us can do, and that applies to food and, and anything else, and so that's, and I, we try to incorporate that into our message as well, and again, like, not demanding perfection from people, but just having them do the most that they can at that moment.